in five minutes we'll be having the meeting with Grandmaster Thomas Luther. I'm happy about it <coughs> as we have another a really nice guest that accepted the invitation and therefore we'll be having another chance to know about interesting stuff at chess. Our guest, Grandmaster Thomas Luther, and the topic of today's meeting is how to help kids and children to get better at chess and ways and methods to support chess growth. This is the topic that we'll be discussing in a moment. If you have any questions about these topics, put them into the chat. And in three minutes, we'll be joining our friend, Grandmaster Thomas Luther. I'm super happy about it, even though our friend Grandmaster Thomas Luther will be at 11 p.m. because he is from different country right now and therefore it is pretty pretty late. Therefore respect for our friend Grandmaster Thomas Luther for being such a great guy that accepted the invitation. Hello Harry Bowles, welcome to the stream. How are you my friend? Are you ready for the interview with the last interview actually with Grandmaster Thomas Luther, the author of the books that I shown recently? This is the one. Maybe I'll just show briefly all of this all of them briefly. This is the first one. We'll be talking about these books. Chess Coaching for Kids, the under 10 project, the first one. The second one. The one that you were laughing at one of the streams due to the title, Luther's Chess Reformation. The next one, the Thinker's Chess Academy with Grandmaster Thomas Luther, Volume 1, Volume 2 and Volume 3 was published four months ago, but I did not have it as yet. Therefore, this will be the five books we'll be discussing and I hope you will be having a lot of great insight because our guest is having a lot of great uh, experience behind his belt, if I can say that. Therefore, it's going to be really, really interesting. Under 10 project would be good for you. You'll be surprised. You'll be surprised because there are a lot of stuff that you probably may have some problems with the under 10 puzzles and tests. You'll be surprised in a moment we'll be discussing that. Let me know if you are ready. I'll put the books next to me to have them because I need to have them if I will be showing them to the audience and in a minute we'll be joining our friend Grandmaster Thomas Luther just in a minute Okay, if you have any questions, put them into the chat. Therefore, I'll be trying to address them one by one. And in the meantime, I'll try to make the interview as best as possible. Adult learners are 10 years old in chess years. Yes, yes, it is something like similar. We'll be asking about the difference between the adults and the kids. The adults when they started and the kids when they started. We'll be discussing this as well. Okay, I'm disappearing for a moment. In a moment, I'll be back with our friend Grandmaster Thomas Luther. Therefore, feel free to wait a little bit. And in a moment, I'll be pop up with our guest. Yes, we are on the stream. Thank you very much. And now, guys, we are having a great pleasure to have our friend Grandmaster Thomas Luther. And we'll be talking about today's uh, today's interesting topics, especially nowadays, because of the prodigy of all of the, let's say, children gifted, talented and so on. The topic of our discussion is how to help kids and children to get better at chess, ways and methods to support chess growth. In the meantime, because this is pretty important, we'll be talking about the books that our friend Thomas Luther has published. The first one, 
Luther's Chess Reformation. This is the first one. The second one, very interesting. This one will be, let's say, very much investigated into what are their survey, what are their research conclusions and so on. The book, the title, Chess Coaching for Kids, the Under 10 Project. Super, super interesting book, to be honest. And the stuff that I'm super happy to hear and see the uh, Thinker's Chess Academy, uh, our friend Grandmaster Thomas Luther, Volume 1, First Steps in Tactics, Volume 2 that I have uh, as well, From Tactics to Winning Strategy, Winning Knowledge, and Volume 3 I haven't bought as yet, but I'll have in the plans. Therefore, we'll be discussing these five books, and at the same time, step by step, we'll be going into the chess tasks. And by the way, guys, if you would like to, uh, let's say, have any questions for our guest, put them into the chat and from time to time I'll be addressing them. OK. OK. Thank you very much for being with us, my friend Thomas Luther. Thank you very much for accepting the invitation. How are you? Yeah, thank you for having me, Thomas. You know, this is this is a great pleasure for me uh, have, being here in this podcast. You know, this is uh, no, very nice. I'm, I'm happy. So thanks for the introduction and thanks for showing the books so well. Yeah, we are super yeah, happy good. because we are the small community on Twitch. Actually, I I set up the YouTube channel. It is going to be a YouTube channel as well. Our mm -hmm. our, let's say, recorded session. And we are promoting the people in chess community that brings value. Right. No matter mm -hmm. what kind of, but if they brings value, we want to promote them. We want to talk about them. We want to share them and we want to show the world that there are people who really care about chess in a global way. And therefore, you're one mm -hmm. of uh, one of our, let's say, guys that is making great stuff, especially as I, I am having a chess uh, collector's book. You probably know me from the Facebook group. Right. Mm -hmm. And therefore, yeah. I am trying to promote this. And uh, whenever I see that there are the authors who has the passion into chess and they have provided interesting ideas either in the books, in the podcasts, various type of media, but especially the books, I'll try to promote them. And we have already uh, the guests Cyrus Lakwadala, we have the guests uh, Jakub Ogard and uh, Andrei Teryehov. Therefore, probably all of them you know. And we are having now you and I'm super happy and I feel very honored and privileged that we can have such a prestigious guest as you. Oh, thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. I'm, I have no words. OK, thank you. OK, so let's go. Maybe first first uh, question, some like a pretty, pretty, uh, si pretty simple one. How did you get into chess? What made you get into the chess? How your journey in chess started? Yeah, OK, my dad played chess and he had a chess board at home. And when I was a kid, I discovered the board. So somehow chess came to me, you know, very early in my life and since then I there was not a single day without chess so, mm -hmm. so started early played went to clubs so the the introduction yeah thanks to my pa my parents my dad who introduced me to chess yeah this is where I am now yeah excellent and if I can ask you a little bit more about this because it's pretty uh. important uh, what made you into the chess, not the other disciplines of sports? Why chess just, let's say, draw, uh, take you that much deeply, if I can ask you? Yeah, okay, it's not a secret, you know, I have a disability. So this is, this is a thing which, okay, I can live, my life is pretty okay, normal, I would say, I don't complain. However, I, I, I'm not good at other sports, you know, so this is what to say. So chess came to me naturally. And I think chess is something where everybody is equal. Chess is the total equalizer. While in many sports, how to say, nature is not fair. Yeah? Mm -hmm. I mean, they're the bigger guys, the faster guy, whatever. They, some the things you cannot make mm -hmm. stronger. You cannot make up with training how much you train. The other one is always better, mm -hmm. but chess is different and chess, chess is very different from all these other sports. So it came to me naturally. And besides, I was as a kid, I was going to all normal schools where I tried to fit in. But chess really helped me to find my sport in life. Mm -hmm. So, so this is, this is a big part of it, definitely. Uh -huh. And yeah. 
Okay, so far about this. Maybe more later, you know. Okay, the, the okay, no problems. Process. Step by step, yeah. we, we'll just manage this, yeah. all of this stuff. I prepared a lot of questions, therefore, yeah. we'll just make all of mm. this. If I may ask uh, about your disability, because we have already one of the friends that has some disability as well, and we are just talking about this top uh, about this topic because it's a little bit, uh, I would say, hidden in the chess world. Mm. How could you describe disability, and especially because we do not want to get into too much private life of your of your, of course, but rather how did it affect your health and chess? What was the let's say uh, impact yeah. over over this? Yeah. So. Mm. But to say, the the thing is like in from all humans, about fifteen percent have mm -hmm. a disability. So it's nothing unusual. It's a minority, but it's not like a, a small minority. Fifteen percent is quite a lot. Mm -hmm. And some disabilities you notice on the first sight, like for instance, there are blind people, people in wheelchair, etc., etc. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. While others you don't see at the first moment. They but some people are they just are a not bit visible slow, you know, okay. from the outside. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Yes, exactly. And so 15% is, is quite a big number. And in a way, I always feel that chess is very attractive to this group. So because by itself, yeah, it's more easy to play chess than let's say play, let's say football mm -hmm. or what. So, so yeah. it's just logical. So I think the, the, the group of people with disability playing chess is even higher than 15 percent so oh. we are, I, this is my feeling mm -hmm. and many times you know since we all play local on a local chess club and nowadays online from home this group is not visible mm -hmm. so um yeah well however for many of them since i have a big group of friends who for them chess is a very important part of their life yeah regardless regardless of ability mm -hmm. so uh my idea was after not playing competitive chess anymore or seldom i just engage more in this topic and this was actually my first book about mm -hmm. the chess reformation yeah. which actually the original title the original <laughs> thanks mm -hmm. the original title is from from pupil or from yeah from schoolboy to grandmaster mm -hmm. this is the this the original title the the publisher thought the reformation thing was more suitable but okay publisher's choice yeah so of um it's it's like there i describe that there's more interest than just hunting uh uh rating points and tournament victories there's also a social aspect, uh, aspect. Mm -hmm. and while i had my time in life where i was of course going to tournaments and wanted to win uh, there's other subjects now which are longer lasting let me say yeah there's mm -hmm. a period in life where you go competitive but the longer time in life we try to to be social so mm -hmm. this is this, this is about yeah. yeah by the way the, for for both of you guys uh, to, to know about the structure of our meeting we'll be having the general questions first and after the second mm. part will be divided into the books therefore for the books will be let's say discussing them in the second part the first part will be some like 25 to 30 minutes and after that we'll get into the books and we'll be discussing them a little bit deeper Another mm. question, if I can may ask, because this is the main topic, if I can say that, how does, uh, sorry, what does it mean to get better at chess? I know that it's a pretty much general question, but from your perspective, mm. what does it mean to get better at chess? Yeah, better at chess. Okay, first of all, practice, practice, practice. Play as much as you can mm -hmm. and always ac accept a challenge. So when you have the, the, when you can choose between, say, going to a weaker tournament or a stronger tournament always choose the stronger one mm -hmm. try to go, go for the challenge don't be afraid of losses except losses as a learning process excellent um, um work hard don't take chess personal mm -hmm. see it like like uh how to say an additional thing 
don't mm-hmm. don't get emo- uh, emotional too much. This mm-hmm. will don't don't, don't get you. attached to the to the to the game too much. Just see it a le- learning experience, right? Yes, exactly. Learning experience. Mm-hmm. If if I know we are all, I don't know, losing hurts. Let me. Yeah, of like course, this. of course. I, I it, it's it's normal. <laughs> but it's human nature, right? It's human nature. Yeah. Mm-hmm human nature so, yeah but we have to we have to get over this mm-hmm. and as younger as better and then in one moment i mean getting over this but not losing this uh, drive to be competitive mm-hmm. don't uh, don't get to a stage where it's it doesn't matter yeah it yeah. should it should matter mm-hmm. but it should not hurt mm-hmm. so, or maybe or maybe you and, should try to deal with this hurt in an eff- efficient manner right Yeah, yeah, if it drives you forward, yes. Mm-hmm. So if it if it uh, creates ambition, yeah. Mm-hmm. And of course, there is chess is also connected with hard work. There is nothing to say. Some endings you must learn, must study. Some openings you must study. There is no way out of this. Mm-hmm. So don't think it's always fun. There's also the the hard uh, part of it. Mm-hmm. And yeah, be critical. Always analyze your games in a critical way, and present them to critics. Yeah, it, this is this is the mo- most important. Yeah, just don't uh, how to say only show your wins, hide your losses. Mm-hmm. It's a crucial mistake. So always always accept critics as a way to improve your strength yeah this in a way okay this is all it's a bit of common knowledge but we all know many of these things are not easy to to do mm-hmm. as they say <laughs> either said than done right <laughs> yeah easy to say work hard but okay <laughs> uh-huh. working hard all the time is not, not yeah so easy yeah enough. and of course the other priorities the obligations work family and so on right therefore we need to yeah, n- yeah. know how to how to manage all of this right yeah also balance yeah mm-hmm. because just for most of us it's not the only thing in life so yeah. find a good balance so for the kids Uh, school just okay manage how much school how much chess uh, when to get away from school when to get away from homework so there's a balance needed mm-hmm. definitely so so balance this and as well as later in life and like you say uh, okay life family life later on relationship kids this is not easy to manage and we see for many players who are in the spotlight mm-hmm. it's not easy to, to, to manage all the all the life uh, things and all the social issues combined with competitiveness mm-hmm. so always take in mind that it's not easy for everyone so yeah. don't complain but try to try to make it work Mm-hmm. Excellent. Thank you very much. Another question that is pretty much uh, connected to the previous one, because the previous one was something like the introduction into the main topic. How to measure the chess progress and chess improvement? How to measure? Because if you know what is the chess improvement, how to measure this? Yeah, this is hard to say. Mm-hmm. Okay, I could I could uh, get out of this question easily by saying, okay, look at the rating. Yeah, but, but do, this, also, is, this is not the case. <laughs> We know this is not yeah, the best know, factor, right? <laughs> Mo- maybe know, not the most have, reliable. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I have a nice quote in one of my books mm-hmm. from my friend Levon Aronian. And Levon said in one moment, this was somewhere private, Levon said, okay, you have to look at the source of the rating points. Mm-hmm. Something like this. I mean, don't. this is like what the, the, the meaning was like, look where the people win their points yeah and we know the rating system once you look deeper into the system you know yeah what to say it's an old system obviously it has some flaws and it's difficult but it's difficult to improve because so many people have it it's so known so okay we all know so it's much harder to win rating points versus really strong players while playing against weaker ones accumulate points uh, and and with Beating weaker players with a high score mm-hmm. is easier to to get rating points, and 
So we should look how someone got the points, rating points. So and now comes to the thing. In that way, it's difficult to just compare ratings. And then there's other things they say, okay, how many good players have you beaten? How many really crucial mistakes you made? Mm -hmm. This, for instance, nowadays is easy since engines help. You know, yeah. all these programs, you check how many times you really made blunders. Mm -hmm. Brilliant moves and so on. Mm -hmm. And all this. Yeah, and then we see, you know, if this happens too often that we blunder, mm -hmm. even if the opponent didn't use because it's not so easy. To and explain then that. Uh -huh. you, see, you see the strength. Actually, this this makes a lot of sense to me. Mm -hmm. I mean, they use they use these things mainly for for uh, detecting cheating nowadays. But um, uh, I think if you come to this middle range of say you know blunder discovery, this can help for for measuring the own strength. Mm -hmm. You know then and then. I think you also know the statistics yeah, a normal a player can make like from 30 to whatever 50 percent engine correlation with mm -hmm. this kind of and this is a very much uh, normal tournament game and and from there we can learn a lot about our own strength and and yeah play and then this helps to understand maybe sometimes there's a pattern of mistakes so this is, we can discover ourselves and work on it. Mm -hmm. At the same time, if I can add a little bit, uh, whenever yeah. we are just uh, learning here uh, on my community, we are just trying to address uh, how much effort have you given into the game. Even if there are mistakes, if rather mm -hmm. blunders on, because if they are inevitable, how much you have given to the game, right? How much ideas you created, mm -hmm. how much, uh, let's say, variations you calculated, how much, uh, uh, let's say, concepts you discovered during the game. Probably this is something like mm -hmm. very difficult to measure because it's not something like seen in the engine, but it counts as well, right? Because uh, the more we see, the more we can uh, generate, the easier it is to search for the moves that are good enough no, and if we just exclude the blunders due to, let's say, fatigue or different type of uh, stuff, then the quality of the game can get better. Do you agree on that? Yes, exactly. There's many things like this. The effort to the game, mm -hmm. also the energy level. You can see someone blunders after five hours of yeah. play. Yeah. This means like tiredness. People should whatever work out more, try to be, you know, what whatsoever, yeah? Mm -hmm. Others others have this or that uh, pattern of mistakes, etc. etc. So so this is uh, something we can just check ourselves mm -hmm. and there's also lots of options to improve. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's this also people have to understand I mean all this uh, how to say yeah, rhythm for the game, when to go go to sleep, when to wake up, what to eat before the game, etc. There's a lot of things everyone can discover for him or herself. Mm -hmm. And there are a couple of advices. However, my experience is that everyone should find out what's the right way. You know, when to go to sleep, when to wake up, how much to drink during the game, etc. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So these things individually we all have yeah and this is a very personal thing so this is, is not something one can say do this or that mm -hmm. drink one liter of water yeah so people have really have to find out what they really need mm -hmm. and at the same time there is a quote of uh, bobby fisher that uh, s some people are making a little bit of jokes why bobby fisher won that many games because he drank orange juice <laughs> Right, yeah, because exactly. of the energy, but without, let's say, the energy that would be killing your thoughts. Right, therefore, we are just a little bit laughing about that he won that many games due to the orange juice. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. This is this is the thing. There's some people like orange juice, others, and you see this from the top players. They 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 drink some isotonic drinks. Yeah, exactly. Orange juice. So the orange juice. <laughs> happy. Yeah. Uh -huh. There is all sort of isotonic drinks mm -hmm. so energy drinks etc and and people drink really different things you know i yeah. i see sometimes from the photos you know this one takes this others take that you know i i don't know this people have to find out themselves yeah really mm -hmm. this is my no advice from my side you know take just figure out what 
makes best what and works also for you the best if you mm -hmm. feel yes exactly some people and some people have a lot of energy they don't need this at all mm -hmm. so this is another mm -hmm. another thing they should not overdo yeah yeah and being, this, being uh, too yeah at the same time energetic. there is important uh, note that sometimes there is the let's say specifics depending on the tournament for example if you are just playing mm -hmm. four hour blitz and all of the time you're playing blitzes probably more energy is needed some like to recover quickly uh -huh. but if we play for example the tournaments that last seven eight days and each day just mm -hmm. one game for four to five hours probably we need to slow down the disproportion of the energy right because otherwise too much energy mm -hmm. will make some kind of too much rush decisions and to rush decisions make the blunders right or maybe over over let's yeah. say over excitement mm -hmm. yes exactly if you play a longer tournament many days just try to keep a normal rhythm you mm -hmm. know just don't uh, stress yourself sometimes waking up early next time waking up late change all the time eat not eat don't do that i mean this is my feeling mm -hmm. however i know that there are some people who just very anarchistically do what what it's up on the day and they are also successful so it's not really clear yeah mm -hmm. but try to figure out right if if my advice is if you think there's chances to improve mm -hmm. just be a bit you know do some research on yourself one tournament try this next tournament try that and mm -hmm. maybe you find out what works best yeah absolutely absolutely I, I fully agree and uh, if you get into the next question because next question probably will be even more interesting for us because we have just friends from hacking live thank you very much hacking live for the rate i really appreciate it by the way for those of you who just pop up we have the guest grandmaster thomas luther and today's meeting is about uh, chess in the sense that we are just trying to uh, talk about the topic how to help kids and children to get better at chess ways and methods to support chess growth and in the meantime if you have any questions and if you just want to ask our guests about something that are reliable to the topic feel free to post that into the chat and i'll try to address it in the in the same time and now another question or maybe uh, the core of the topic that we let's say wanted to discuss is teaching chess to kids and children if we can get get into this topic mm. how what would you say about it because this is the specific one especially because there are more and more so-called adult chess improvers right therefore if you get into this shift mm. into the kids and children what is the specifics of this work yeah and kids you, we all know i mean kids they're in a learning uh, stage of life mm -hmm. so they can improve a lot you you know there's some some saying you know if what you don't learn as a kid you will never learn ever yeah. in life yeah and and this is the thing so learning early something and now it comes to chess but many other things yeah speaking about the most obvious languages kids pick up another language easily while when older you know then gets things getting harder mm -hmm. and in a way okay in music is the same yeah uh, instruments etc is the same kids learn easy from a certain age they, they say that the kids like uh, their kids are uh, like the sponge right they simply yeah, vacuum yeah. all of the skills all of the knowledge all of the experience they are making this very dynamically processed yeah mm -hmm. yeah it's a blessing to be young yeah to in still you know able to to take all that things in so good so this makes the thing a uh, great working with kids because they have a lot of potential mm -hmm. so we all know when you when you teach kids and later train them you you and we all think this kid could have be could be very successful in life so you we all i mean not only me i think we all have this thing that we make the world better right Mm -hmm. And this is, I think, the reward of the chess teacher and chess trainer. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, In I moment. think that's. Yeah, mm, yeah. I think so. This is for many of the people who are doing that. I think this is the the motivation. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you very much. So, Another question, because we'll be just going slowly into mm -hmm. this topic, and and the, the second part will be devoted to the books, and with the books will be, let's say, asking the questions mm -hmm. as well. How to teach chess kids in an efficient way? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, how to how to teach? Yeah, this mm -hmm. is <laughs> this is this is a, a this is challenging uh -huh. <laughs> and a very challenging question. Uh -huh. Yeah. So usually. Um, 
I think, okay, first of all, the kids from from the stage that they know the, the all the rules. So they should play. This is this is an important thing. Play is an um, important part of it. And kids like chess or love chess because of the play, mm -hmm. not because of some teacher teaching them some stuff, but the play. So this we should never forget. So t the kids should play and then should combine it with some, you know, lesson and always take the age into account. Mm -hmm. So the very young kids, of course, for them, the, the theoretical part should be shorter than for the a bit older ones. And then in one moment, when they, they come and also ask questions, like what can could be done better here or there. So if you get them to the idea that things could be studied and prepared, they don't need to, to invent everything new, mm -hmm. then you or the, the chess trainer is on the right way in my thinking i mean so yeah well basically it's like you have to create this kind of love for chess mm -hmm. once this is reached the kids will will improve a lot so this is the most important thing mm -hmm. if they don't enjoy chess then it's i think it's difficult or seldom that they improve mm -hmm. so you cannot really force it so you have to have to do it uh, on the joy part yeah yeah of course uh-huh thank you very much mm -hmm. and we have uh, the question from one of our one of our uh, viewer he's uh, asking about w what is the approach for adult beginners i'm especially interested about adult beginners that they started chess when they were adults for example at the age of 20 25 30 35 and so on should it be mm -hmm. the similar path like the kids that started chess at the age of six, eight, maybe ten, or maybe we should differentiate. Of course, I'm not uh, talking about the stuff that of the, let's say, communication style, but rather the material and the methods of teaching. Should they be the same one or maybe different one? What is your opinion about it? Maybe also your experience from what you just made mm. with one of the books. Yeah. Okay, for adults, of course, it's different. I mean, there are very seldom cases that an adult beginner gets over a certain level. We know there's so. So first of all, any adult starting chess should not have illusions about the playing strength in the future. So this mm -hmm. is very important. Don't be disappointed. Mm -hmm. Chess can be fun, whatever your level is. Excellent. So this is the this is the first. Oh, don't stress you with result, uh, results so so and once you're over this and you just love chess because it's a really nice game then try to how to say uh try to enjoy uh watching games try to enjoy classical games or even some enjoy this kind of nice puzzles and compositions which really are very artful and play a little bit yourself but don't stress you with this mm -hmm. because when adult you're adult and then stressing i saw many okay i, te I tell a negative uh, uh, version of it just to to emphasize on it mm -hmm. if adults start and then they say okay you have to play in this starter tournament and then the adult comes and they're all these very young kids Mm -hmm. And then many adults don't feel comfortable playing there. And because also the kids are pretty good, so it will also result for in losses and all this. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know if this would be the right approach. I mean, I personally would advise against it. Mm -hmm. So this is where I'm coming from. As an adult beginner, uh, focus on the nice things in mm -hmm. chess. Mm -hmm. Nice things, yeah? So yeah. don't stress yourself with whatever learning any opening line and all this. It's This is not not worth it. And these this things are not bringing joy. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Start with... Okay, I don't know. I mean, for adult beginners, look at uh, this nice... Uh, programs they show about chess talks about chess the video uh, comments on 
top class events, there are sometimes very nice stories about chess. Like uh, puzzle solving is a nice thing. Yeah? Try to try to solve maybe in your daily newspaper there's a chess column try to solve whatever they give checkmate in two or three try to solve this and this will really be joyful this mm -hmm. is my my advice yeah excellent I, I am the same position as long as you mm. enjoy it as long as you feel that is mm. beneficial for you you shouldn't matter about any ratings any titles any tournament wins especially if you are on the, let's say, pretty much disadvantage because you started as an adult, right? You haven't had the experience as the kid that started at the age of five, has the, let's say, bunch of trainers. At the age of 16 or 17, he or she is the international master, right? It is pretty much different, different world, I would say. And therefore, I started chess as an adult as well. And therefore, I told, to, I told my viewers, because sometimes my viewers asking me if I am a title player. And I told, I, I tell them all of the time that uh, if if I started at the age of five or six and I would be practiced for 15 years, probably I would get FIDE master level, maybe international master, but maximum. But if I started at the age of 21, 22, I couldn't even get into candidate master. But what I really appreciate, I enjoy chess, right? Even if I quit playing over yeah. the board chess classical one due to the too much stress, I don't want to prepare because I don't have time, but I can educate, right? I can enjoy, I can show the beauty. I can play some like the Blitz's games that makes, makes me a little bit of uh, fun as well. And at the same time, if you started as an adult, this is this is very important, as you just mentioned, I'll just point it out. You shouldn't uh, expect too much, right? Because probably it is not going to happen because many adults ha are having a little bit distorted view. For example, if they get into the tournaments and they practice, for example, for a year or two, they expected to win the tournament, right? But they do not mm. think about it, that there are players that are playing all of the time and they started, let's say, five, six, eight or ten years ago and they are in the same tournament as well. And the chances that they are going to win is pretty much not that high. What about that? Mm. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. The thing is like, don't, for the adult beginners, don't don't put too much stress on mm -hmm. yourself don't don't put like no pressure of result this, mm -hmm. I, I think this is the most important thing many adult beginners put this pressure expect too much and then chess instead of being joyful is stress and even painful in some times mm -hmm. don't go to this this yeah. is this is my advice don't go and also accept that there are things which kids learn adults cannot copy mm -hmm. and what would and what is... would they be if we just make a, a few examples what would this uh, kids oh. can do that adults can replicate if i can say that because it's important and not yeah let's see for instance my i i thought of for instance foreign languages mm -hmm. you know there are kids who grow up in an international community or they travel with parents or international schools mm -hmm. and suddenly these kids speak whatever five languages yeah and all <laughs> all fluently uh -huh, uh -huh. but we, we know these people they are you know blessed as kids mm -hmm. so the, because they, they were exposed to this yeah. languages and now when someone from a certain age says oh i wanna do the same it will never happen yeah and even even you know i i've learned that for me like okay in, i wasn't exposed to english language in school however it was late so my german accent will not go away I mm -hmm, will have mm -hmm. it. yeah and now nowadays i know if we are exposed to english before like seven years old eight years old there is mm -hmm. without accent then from a certain age it is an accent and it gets heavier as later you learn mm -hmm. and and this is for everyone and then basically we cannot or we, I don't know, cannot, is maybe not the right thing, but very unlikely to get rid of it. I mm -hmm. mean, there's, I mean, the effort would be tremendous to work on it, yeah? Yeah. So, so, and now speaking about more languages, impossible, and kids pick it up easily. And another thing that I'm, where I'm not an expert, but I just have friends doing this, where the kids just learn some instrument in, in music, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. if the kids try to learn whatever the piano in an eight, 
uh, a late stage of life, mm -hmm. not easy, yeah. Mm -hmm. Or what's uh, and all the others, violin or I, I don't know. There are experts who can tell more. I'm not an expert. Yeah, just, we'll be we'll be having I such guests uh, about about this as well. And one of our friend Freya just from Norway, she just mentioned that that uh, the more you start earlier, the faster you can just grasp it because she's into music as well. Therefore, she confirmed that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And there are many other things. Mm -hmm. if, if kids are exposed to IT if young when they are coding, yeah, mm -hmm. writing programs, it's much easier for them to do this this on a high level later. Yeah, if, especially if, if they enjoy it, right? If they are hooked on just on yeah. that, right? Yeah, exactly. When the kids enjoy this, mm -hmm. and then they can do magnificent careers in IT. Yeah, and and I think if we sum it up, we have so many more of examples and topics where it's the same yeah mm -hmm. so basically for the parents it's important to how to say give kids a chance yeah that they can choose what they love and learn early so kids who are just have many options or, or exposed to many things are blessed in a way yeah mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. Yeah, it's yeah. it's very very yeah. true, very true. And now another question because it is some like continuation mm. of the previous one. What to avoid while teaching kids? What needs to be avoided at <laughs> all costs? I know that it is pretty much broad topic, but the, the ones <laughs> that you have experienced when you were having the conversation with parents, maybe the the coaches, the instructors, the that you have some like life experience that you can share with us. What should be avoided while teaching kids? Yeah, what should be avoided? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Some like the okay, most common, be, the most common. Mm -hmm. Most common. Don't be too harsh. Mm -hmm. Don't put all, all the the things you wanted for yourself in life on the shoulders of the kids. Yeah. So yeah. because let's see, because but I'm not the world champion. The kid has to become world champion. Yeah, ambitions, so, right? Ambitions. Know, ambitions. The mm -hmm. ambitions. Unfulfilled of, ambitions, rather, right? Yeah, like like this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh yeah don't don't i mean there's there's one thing there's competitiveness so the the kids are really you know trying to win the games and the tournament but don't push too harsh yeah. there's, this, there's also a social attitude where which must be trained uh sometimes you know when pushing too hard it only hurts mm -hmm. and there's always or how we say for every action, there's always a reaction. Mm -hmm. It should learn, you yeah. know, so it's not, don't over push. Mm -hmm. So this is something kids should learn. Of course, stick to the rules. Nowadays, even more important. The stories when I read that some kids cheated online and trainers looked the other way, this is wrong because it may haunt them even 10 years later, yeah. you know, as yeah. we see in, in in actual cases yeah mm -hmm. not good try to tell the kids always be fair and honest mm -hmm. it's very important yeah mm -hmm. just because it is and because yeah the second thing yeah it can come back you know in one moment it yeah? back, back, internet, backfire mm -hmm. backfire internet doesn't forget yeah yeah and so fairness yeah yeah treat opponent with respect and I don't know. <laughs> so things like this, yeah. Mm -hmm. So always teach the kids to always set up the chessboard after finishing the game. Mm -hmm. This is one advice. Some I kind of etiquette, your... right? Some kind of good habits, etiquette. Etiquette. Yeah. Mm -hmm. etiquette. Don't leave the chessboard without setting up the pieces. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I ah. think we all know, yeah. They, yeah. They just throw the pieces and then they left. And leave. especially. So, Especially if some somebody works in a chess club, right? And after the classes yes, is exactly. over, and they, the kids with parents are pretty much storming out, right? And all of the coaches yeah, yeah. needs to, let's say, make all of the, let's say, cleaning up, all of the setting of the boards and so on. Therefore, it's the etiquette and the good behavior and a little bit of culture, I would say, right? The better the culture yes. general, the faster the good habits can be built. The better the habits, the faster the good etiquette can be imposed, right? Or encouraged. What about yeah. that? It's yeah, exactly. It's also good to learn this early because when not learning early, as older we get, as more difficult it is to to adjust. Mm -hmm. So okay, this yeah okay maybe I I don't know this is 
a short summary. Maybe, yeah, it's okay. It's perfectly maybe. fine. Perfectly fine. It's great because we do not want to uh, make the elaboration about it, but rather a little bit yeah. of direction, a little bit of direction. Therefore, I fully understand that that's perfectly fine. Another stuff uh, about the, uh, let's say, topic that uh, we are just addressing, how parents should support their kids. Oh, yeah. How they should support okay. their kids. Because we know what to avoid, but how should they support? For example, ha having them to, uh, let's say, organize trips to the tournaments with other parents, right? Maybe this is the logistics, yeah. if I can say that. Maybe hiring the coach. What about this? Yeah, mm -hmm. there's always these things. Okay, I mean, the kids usually are accompanied by parents. I mean, for the first tournaments. Mm -hmm. And then there's one thing. When I was a kid, okay, in one moment we had always coaches who accompanied a group but yeah. somehow this were other other times i understand now there's not i mean this is more seldom but there's more like parents accompany the kids all the time so i this is okay this i don't know this was this was a different time when i was a kid in the 1970s this group thing was was the the way to go to tournaments and yeah well of course having a coach at an or a teacher in an early age is important so sometimes this is also kind of luck you know the kids coming to the local chess club so in some chess clubs there's activity there are people to to run classes etc in other chess clubs they just meeting you know and then have maybe a blitz tournament that's it mm -hmm. and in other communities there's no chess club at all yeah so this is is this is uh yeah okay this is the life all, always has this kind of luck you know sometimes you you want something but it also must be there mm -hmm. and so and then if chess club isn't in the environment it's difficult for the parents because i mean there's of course chances nowadays for online mm -hmm. teaching which isn't substitute to normal teaching it could be but it could not, how to say, make up for, for real normal over the board. Mm -hmm. right? And now yeah, the question, so the question that we have on the list is just, just the one that you started, let's say, answering. When the coach should be hired for the kid to develop in an efficient way? When? I mean, what is the age either to st when the kids started after, let's say, uh, five months, one year, two years, three years, or maybe at the, let's say, process, for example, if the kids, let's say, going into game very quickly, but the parents cannot support them because the parents doesn't have, let's say, the knowledge experience about chess. They just know about chess in a global way, but they cannot help the kids. Maybe when the coach should be hired for the kid to grow, if, if you have such a, let's say, knowledge mm. experience, Maybe some like even general the general directions to to to, un to to unpack. Yeah, yeah, this is the thing. Yeah. <laughs> this is really difficult. Yeah, I mean, in one moment, okay, I think the kid, him or herself, they understand, they wanna learn more, mm -hmm. and they need someone to learn from. And then many chess clubs just no have either people who do that or they can make connections so without this just the, some parents come had no exposure to chess before the kid suddenly brings up chess mm -hmm. so this is a typical chess parent and suddenly how to find a coach uh, how to how to get a coach this is not an easy thing absolutely not an easy thing mm -hmm. so best is to find someone who's nearby because it should it's much preferable to have training and coaching in person yeah mm -hmm. i mean online possible but in person much better and may maybe and we can is... add one important note not forget that uh, the first initial contact if possible because depending on the let's say country mm -hmm. depending on expenses and other variables but the first contact with the children or this or the kid that is hooked on chess should be the personal because this way the, there is the relationship right not just the knowledge yeah. but the relationship but after the kid is grown for example 8 10 11 12 13 15, mm -hmm. the older the kid the faster we can maintain the online contact contacts like online teaching right yeah 
right exactly is a different thing if the kid is six years mm -hmm. or 14 years i mean this is this is very clear yeah from a certain age also uh now the 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 training gets more specific mm -hmm. of course you can discuss uh the the specifications of an opening in an online meeting yeah because you talk about this and that variation you just discuss it you play a training game you check with engines etc mm -hmm. so this is perfectly done online well to to teach like some general strategy to a to a kid you need you need to do that uh, in person yeah mm -hmm. i mean this is this is a different thing yeah and yeah but still still there's a lot of lot of luck involved yeah for for parents to find a trainer because this is if the kid is in a big city one of the big cities there are big chess clubs so they will help and point into the right direction it's a way so, easier right mm -hmm. it's it's easier much much easier mm -hmm. if if not i don't know I really this is very specific okay sometimes you know make a connection to via friends whatsoever and then okay then if lucky this will also work mm -hmm. yeah okay thank you very much it was yeah. the first part that we have guys about the let's say introduction of some people can say a warm-up even it was pretty pretty much mm -hmm. uh, let's say a little bit uh, longer than expected but it's okay because we are having uh, let's say that time monitored and now uh, i will just show you guys the some of the books of our guests and in a moment we'll be start uh, discussing this box i'll just briefly present them this is the first book of our guest uh, luther stress reformation Another one, because we'll be discussing about that in a moment, one by one, Chess Coaching for Kids, the Under 10 project. Next one is the first volume of Thinker's Chess Academy. The first volume is called First Steps in Tactics. Another one, beautiful one as well, is the volume two, From Winning Tactics to Strategy Winning Knowledge. And the third one is just, uh, let's say, published a few months ago. Therefore, I haven't bought it as yet, but we'll be discussing briefly as well. And if we can start about this, I would say a little bit controversial, controversial title, because the, uh, whenever I presented this book, it was probably two months ago, I mentioned like that, that I will try to contact the offer, and if the offer agrees into the, uh, let's say, invitation, we'll just discuss about the book, about his, let's say, uh, books overall. And if, when I uh, when I shown the, the book cover, it was the Luther's transformation, everybody started laughing. Why? Because of the Lutheran revolution, right? Some like in the history, there was some like very similar. And they was like, oh, this is the Thomas Luther that made the revolution in chess. And I told them, yes, but check it, check, check, let's check this out if I, uh, if I ask the offer about getting into the meeting. And now we have the offer. Therefore, my friend Thomas, tell us, is this the revolution in chess in this book? Mm, no, really. Okay, let me tell, because I, I briefly told already, the, the original title in mm -hmm. the German language is like from schoolboy to grandmaster. Okay. So this is the, the title of the original book. And this one, Reformation, this is just a translation from German language to English. And and now comes the thing. Uh, the the publisher was or is Quality Chess. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so Quality Chess, they they didn't know, they, they told mm, the title is difficult to translate because the meaning doesn't really fit or whatsoever, I don't know. So they, they, they changed it to the actual one. Mm -hmm. And of course they played with the, my family name, Luther, because Martin Luther, like 500 years ago, mm -hmm. made all this uh, split up from the, for split from Rome, you know, it led to whatever all this, uh, oh, oh, well, you know, mm -hmm. the between Protestants and Catholics and all or whatsoever. And yeah well i don't know if this is a if if this was a good idea or not i actually think we should have kept that out of chess mm -hmm. yeah of and course of course also there's also the thing that luther is not a seldom name there are many luthers it's not like the most common but you know among the most like i think and from the 
number of, of people there are quite quite a lot of Luthers. It's a typical name, so mm-hmm. it's not like it's a it's a very seldom thing. So I think this was not a okay whatsoever happened. Mm-hmm. Okay, and let's get in, into the yes into the book because we know the title about it. Now let's go into the context. What is the book all about? And what did you uh, include in the book? Because I don't want to spoil too much. I would rather give you the chance to, uh, let's say, make a little bit of insight into the book. Why did you ra- why did you write this book? What was the reason for that? No, the thing was okay. The first uh, third of the book is an is autobiographic mm-hmm. about me. So basically, I thought it was time to write something about me my chess life my chess career and now as it is it's on the very first page that basically my life is pretty much defined by the disability i have so this is the impression many as a kid already many other kids had from me this is the kid with a disability Mm -hmm. and so well there was even you know things that okay it would be hard you know to come up with certain results in life because of disability times were also more difficult 50 years ago uh, when inclusion was not such a real thing like it is now nowadays you know with all technology computers etc many disabilities are not really that bad mm-hmm. anymore that, to, to that painful like to this. manage right mm-hmm yeah it's 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 easier to manage because mm-hmm. of technology yeah so yeah. and back then it wasn't like this and okay for me chess was okay how to say a lifesaver yeah mm-hmm. more or less mm-hmm. and this is the first third of the of the book and in a way this is of course reforming the whole situation in chess or i mean one could interpret it like this because until now even now there are very very few few players with disability who became grandmasters Mm -hmm. Uh, you know in poland you have uh marcin tasbier yes marcin tasbier Mm -hmm. grandmaster Mm -hmm. yes marcin tasbier Marcin, who is blind uh, or legally blind Mm -hmm. marcin made made his grandmaster title there's recently another player in spain younger player who became grandmaster also legally blind and right now there's not a single person in wheelchair who made who made grandmaster title there are a couple of international masters who mm-hmm. are in wheelchair so this is in a way a new thing you know this is thanks to our modern life that mm-hmm. this is even possible imagine a hundred years ago the situation was impossible much, much mm-hmm. yes because yeah, impos- these, yeah, these, these people say... excluded from community right put it this way right yes mm-hmm. yeah exactly mm-hmm. so this is basically the first part of the of the book mm-hmm. so just to tell about this and also trying to encourage others you know kids who have a disability that whatever happened to you in life Try to be successful. Deal with the problem. Don't complain. Work harder. The same as in chessboard. Look for the best solution, no matter what happens, yeah. right? Yeah, exactly. Don't don't just say this one was bad. The past is bad. The, mm-hmm. the, the or like in when you play cards, they say play the cards you dealt with. Yeah, yeah. So, what you can do, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, and. This is the first one. And then in the second, I mean, part, I, I write about experiences as a coach where, where I, I mean, I try to give certain ideas of myself, how to train, mm-hmm. uh, how to, to prepare a line. And then there's also some tests where, where I say, this is what I try to do. And I mean, basically, I describe my first step as coach, which are now like 20 years ago already so it's just also a long history Mm -hmm. so yeah so this is the book and then some the last chapter is some some kind of how to say encouragement i mean for for others you know because many say okay life isn't uh, playing chess uh, just boring for the whole life and then the thing is like 
uh, what to do in life you know of course you can aim to be incredible whatever public person successful however what are the chances for that mm -hmm. do what you what you what you really like mm -hmm. and do that yeah with passion yeah so. and enjoy try to enjoy it as much as possible right yeah yeah this is this this is it yeah mm -hmm. and in the meantime if i can add a little bit because there is a great comment from the chat our friend kgrix says and there are the title chess players who have a degree of asperger or mild autism one of the public figure that we can reveal because it was let's say publicly announced is uh, eric uh, hansen the one that is streaming on mm. twitch eric hansen grandmaster from canada mm. and uh, if if he if if i understood correctly he has some kind of autism right and therefore he just excel of this yeah. due to managing this stuff with the let's say uh, processing this internally right because he was not that good at mathematics at school he has a lot of problems but chess has given him some like the internal peace i'm not sure if i expressed it correctly right mm -hmm. yeah this is right actually asperger's is not common but there are many players with asperger's and asperger like syndromes and mm -hmm. we all know about them i mean let's not mention names yeah, yeah of course i don't mm -hmm. want to go too far of course but there are many many who, who tell this and asperger's and our Days is nothing unusual anymore. Mm -hmm. Yeah, even yeah. Elon Musk announced yeah. having Asperger's. And more and more, it is and diagnosed, all... diagnosed in the in the let's say the various um, places. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in a way, yeah. So this is this is the thing. Yeah, whatever happens in life mm -hmm. doesn't matter. Yeah. So Asperger's, Asperger's is a sort of a disability. However, <laughs> and now, however, yeah, there's. There's different definitions of disability. You mm -hmm. know, the, the United Nations even even they couldn't decide on on one definition. And in chess, actually, in FIDE, we rely on the definition of the Paralympic Committee. Mm -hmm. There's the International Paralympic Committee, and they have very detailed regulations. And so, in FIDE, where I'm involved in this disability area. Uh, we just made a pragmatic decision. We follow the International Paralympic Committee, so we don't invent anything new. Mm -hmm. so, and then on that side, if anybody wa is interested, they can find about all the regulations and the uh, and the way they the, during the Paralympics they hold the competitions. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you very much. And now let's get into the second book because this book is absolutely amazing. And to be honest. I had no idea that this book exists. It's my, I, I am, I am guilty. I apologize for that because I was not aware that such book exists, especially as you write uh, probably in the book, if I'm not mistaken, that you have written this book because there was no such book in the market. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. And if you yes. can tell us about the book, the book title you guys see, but I can just read it uh, for you. Just coaching for kids, the under 10 project. And by the way, uh, the subtitle is service tests, examples and informations about just under eight, under 10 and by our friend Grandmaster Thomas Luther. If, I, if you can tell us a little bit more about that, because it's some like a very unique approach to chess, to education, to the research and combine this, this together. Therefore, feel free to share as much as you wish. Yeah, thanks a lot. Yeah, the, the under 10 project was a huge project itself. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, I'm only one of the authors, you know, this is a, it's a teamwork. As mm -hmm. you see, there's the, I'm the, how to say, the leading, leading author. And then there are a couple of others who did a lot of research, contributed a lot of chapters in the book. Mm -hmm. For instance, there's one chapter where a friend of mine just uh, made research about uh, mistakes at the uh, German national championship under 10 years old. Mm -hmm. So, and he, he just took uh, more than 2000 games. This was games from the last years yeah. uh, and just uh, made this research and now checking how many times, for instance, blunders happened and by blunders, there are different this, uh, value of blunders. There were blunders just blundering something and blunders who who just turn the the game around. Mm -hmm. Let's say from let's say from being winning or clearly better to being lost. Yeah. And then he discovers that in many games or too many games, 
actually this happened a couple of times during the game mm -hmm. like let's say three four times yeah. so from white loss to black loss white loss to black loss and this and then some result mm -hmm. and then uh, he developed or made some conclusions so what is the real strength because we understand that on a good level this kind of mistake immediately lead to a loss mm -hmm. to so the definite no loss game mm -hmm. Definite. You you make this yeah. kind of being lost, and you will most likely lose. In and there there is this, there is the saying: to win a game of chess, it doesn't need to play fifty nine good moves, but to lose uh, yeah. the game, it is just enough, just one bad one, right? <laughs> For some like, let's say, reversing this this one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. And then it's understandable that this kind of mistakes they cannot whatever happen like by average let's say three four times a game mm -hmm. it just cannot happen even if the kids are whatever eight years old nine years old this is too much mm -hmm. so and then the trainer should focus on this you know the checking out why these heavy mistakes happen and why this happens and then there's some some kind of uh how to say advises to uh, first of all to understand that there are these mistakes and it's not like not a nice move or a wrong strategy it's just a, a huge blunder which basically leads to loss mm -hmm. and then the coach should focus to this thing and then okay with some kids they should just do tactics 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 and avoid all this so in this moment the coach should basically stop all whatever strategy lessons mm -hmm. and 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 train calculation 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 if you discover your kid blunders then calculation is the only thing to to solve it mm -hmm. so something like this there was this kind of uh trying to develop you know advices and and then there's there's other things there's a chapter how to uh, bring kids to to tournaments because now we come exactly to the same thing mm -hmm. uh, what should parents do when they come to let's say an under 10 tournament and we all know this yeah imagine you are the parent your kid plays chess and then say oh we we qualified i qualified for the national championship so as the parent you go to the tournament you book your hotel you bring your kid to the tournament but basically you have very little knowledge what's actually going to happen mm -hmm. so in, in, in this book it's also trying to address to the to parents uh, what they expect mm -hmm. so what they should expect so whatsoever yeah so and okay there are a couple of quotes from famous coaches where to focus and what is important what is not important yeah well okay yeah. filled fill the whole book and of course exercises so mm -hmm. the kids can also train but also it's good for for teachers and trainers they can of course take the exercise for mm -hmm. the lessons and i'll just uh, give you guys the insight into this one it is the back cover of the book and i'll just just uh, allow myself to read this uh, briefly the uh, back cover says, uh, says the uh, specific stuff. Scientific research based on 2,500 games gives parents and coaches answers on the number of kind of typical mistakes and other interesting questions how to improve their kids. 247 positions, 68 examples plus lessons to important topics, deliver excellent material to improvement and tournament preparation. Additionally, Grandmaster Luther gives the reader valuable information about all aspects of talent, prodigies and training. Under 10 Project is the most comprehensive work about the chess development and of for younger play young players. And there is the talent, prodigies and training. And that's why I would like to put a little bit, if you can tell us, about how can you uh, recognize if the kids is talented or it is the prodigy or any any way uh, gifted how can you see if you for example have a few meeting if for example you're the coach maybe the parent how can you recognize that this kid is talented gifted or any uh, any other stuff that can let's say make pretty quick improvement how can you recognize it maybe what are the signals maybe right what are the signals that this kid can have some kind of uh, pretty oh. much skills into chess yeah of course there's okay there are this couple 
couple of things. One is, of course, creativity. So the kid can can create or think something and just comes up with with an amazing uh, idea, mm -hmm. which just the kid discovered by herself, himself. Yeah. And this is uh, a good sign of 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 talent of of being you know very promising of course there's like quick calculation some mm -hmm. kids can can get tactics so quickly yeah? yeah so you show a puzzle and they solve it yeah immediately so this is a this is a great sign so mm -hmm. that's why i like i mean nowadays i tell like do tactics tactics when I was young, there were magazines and books, but now there's all this online databases mm -hmm. and all the platforms. So they can, I say, okay, take it, get to one of the platforms, do your puzzles all the time. This is important. Calculation skill. Mm -hmm. may, I, may I give mm -hmm. a little bit yeah. of joke about, about this, uh, let's say, opportunities mm -hmm. 30 years ago and now? May I give a little bit of joke? If you were yeah, my sure. coach, if you were my coach, right? Let's pretend you are my coach and you will say, Tomasz, just solve all of the tactics at leeches. I would say it's impossible. Yeah. Why? Because nowadays at leeches, there are three million of tactics. Three million. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Three million yeah. of puzzles. Therefore, it's impossible, right? 30 years ago, you may have three to four workbooks. You probably remember, right? The Russian ones and so on, right? You have three to four workbooks. Yeah, right. Nowadays, you have millions, millions, literal millions. Therefore, yeah. it's impossible to solve. And there is the uh, quote of some of the, let's say, uh, some of the offers of Chessable courses that they said that, for example, they can solve more tactics in one month when Alehin solve entire his entire life, right? In one month, they can solve, right, for example, right. 800 uh, or, or 100,000 puzzles, uh, way more than Alehin during his entire life. This is really impressive, isn't it? Yeah, it is. This is nowadays, you know, and of course, you know, it's so hard to find uh, these tactics. I mean, the, the puzzles yourself. Let's see now, for instance, you follow a tournament, and you click through every game and then sometimes comes a combination and this game you save in a database mm -hmm. but now all the algorithms do that yeah they check for this yeah and they are so good that most of these uh, puzzles are real good yeah mm -hmm. i mean i mean this is amazing and so they have millions of puzzles because so many games are played online the algorithms check it and they create the databases. So this is now such an opportunity for kids to learn. Mm -hmm. Like you said, yeah? yeah. What, what could Alekin do? I mean, he was a fantastic player. If mm -hmm. you check his But games, he didn't have that much resources, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. no resources. Even with his strength, you know, his strength was magnificent. If mm -hmm. he would have more resources, imagine yeah, what yeah. he could reach. And now the kids, there are so many kids, they're training this and I see, when I, I coach kids here and I see how like how many eight year olds are so skilled with tactics. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. Yeah. It's definitely definitely a different world now than it was a couple of uh, decades ago. Absolutely. Definitely. Absolutely. Uh, mm -hmm. And chess became more how to say tactical in mm -hmm. that way because yeah. there's they see more. They they see more tactics and they see more defenses as well mm -hmm. so this is this is really a big change mm -hmm. so chess became more how to say the the, the ability to to calculate mm -hmm. became became much better yeah this, this, and, this much the... much more important because one of such mistakes leads to the collapse of the game and strategic in inaccuracy is something like having the position a little better a little worse but the tactical blunder makes the position close to lost or close to just barely drawn even if you have the advantage right yeah exactly this is basically the point chess in that way is how mm -hmm. to say we can say I more brutal know. more brutal <laughs> brutal, brutal brutal yeah you have no chance of coming back mm -hmm. after big blunder and so one question it, about yeah. about this book uh, about the prodigy talent and uh, this stuff you just mentioned uh, how to recognize talent first is creativity the second quick calculation what would be the third one the first signal how yeah. to recognize the kid that is talented or gifted yeah. good memory mm -hmm. 
there's this thing i remember one story there okay i hand out some 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 puzzles some on on paper yeah so the kids could yeah. solve just the old-fashioned way and then a couple of months later i hand out the same thing just okay why not and yeah from the group only a minority recognized it mm -hmm. you know? so mm -hmm. this is the this is the talented one yeah yeah so yeah so this is for instance another thing good memory because also memory is needed in chess you just have to, in one moment to memorize not only a couple of openings but also a couple of endings couple of technical things and all the pattern starting from smufford made mm -hmm. to more pattern recognition things. yeah pattern recognition so good memory is essential mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. and you can if you want to get very high mm -hmm. absolutely yeah and we can all improve our memory we can train it mm -hmm. but there's also, as I see, natural gift. Some yeah. kids just have better memory than others. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, this is, I mean, yeah. So memory is something. And in a way, yeah, in a way, of course, okay, kind of, uh, how to say, this this kind of willpower mm -hmm. to win. Yeah, yeah. So sometimes you see this, some some have this yeah this determination yeah to be successful yeah mm -hmm. so maybe, maybe you can even call it the drive right the drive they yeah. need to be successful no matter the activity right no matter the field they want yeah. to be successful at i would say in a little bit quotation mark at all costs right so like, i do not mean cheating yes. but some like a very much drive to be successful and if it is the chest that they want to pursue they are getting into chess very deep and they want to, to do anything what is needed that, that make the success work right yes right right you, you can see i mean this are and there are a couple of of these qualities and i think when you go to a, when you have a class you of kids you see mm -hmm. which kids you know they are have these qualities this, yeah have these qualities and then mm -hmm. there are many nice kids who just enjoy doing chess mm -hmm. and they're happy with chess and they don't have these qualities, so they yeah. are happy with chess and come. And it's good to have all these kids because they might keep the love for chess for all their life Absolutely. and make fr friendships. But the ones who really be strong, they stand out already at an early age. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay, great, great description. I really appreciate it. It was, it was awesome. Another book because we have a few more. Is the <laughs> Thinker's Chess Academy? This is absolutely amazing. And to be honest, when I saw this title, because I just saw this title some like two years ago, I was something like, oh, it's a pretty interesting book. I didn't know about you as the author back then, and I was something like, okay, I'll just check it out and I'll just see what's inside. There was the teaser with the Thinker Publishing. Mm -hmm. I just uh, let's say lo look at the teaser. I was something like, no way, this guy knows what's going on. I mean, uh, about let's say the structure, yeah. about the presenting the material. I was something like, okay. I need to have all of the series <laughs> therefore I have the two of them the third of them would be bought probably in a few months from now and the first volume as you just mentioned because we were talking a little bit about tactics right now that tactics are way more significant than let's say 20 years ago the first volume is first steps in tactics how could you say how uh, the book was let's say uh, devised uh, structured and why did you uh, decided to make that trilogy because there are three part three volumes of this book why trilogy mm -hmm. Yeah, in a way, okay, the, the, the thing is like, uh, here the level is like, uh, for kids, they are past the beginner's level, mm -hmm. but they are not yet like, you know, not yet uh, good tournament players or strong tournament players. They are on their way to, to be tournament players. Mm -hmm. And now the thing is how to improve. And now comes one thing. I've, I told this already, calculation for these kids is important. They should do tactics, 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 because on this level, uh, just uh, a bit above beginner's level, mm -hmm. uh, most of the games are decided by tactics. Mm -hmm. And as so you just mentioned thing... before, with this research about the under 8 or under 10 by the blunders and blunders most often consist of tactics even strategical are possible but blunders tactical are more often right and therefore tactics and blunders yeah. comes together is that correct yeah yeah correct i think and now comes one thing 
if some, I mean, I mean, how to say, uh, we should not uh, overvalue strategy uh, too early. Mm -hmm. So the strategy thing comes at a very later a moment of developing chess. Mm -hmm. So the, the, this strategy thing later, later, mm -hmm. just try to, to solve tactics mm -hmm. and of course try to give the kids a good path in the first 10 moves. So just the, the typical principles, mm -hmm. whatever, yeah, move pawns, occupy center. Yeah, king safety and so on. Mm -hmm. King safety and, and the first 10 moves, safe position. Mm -hmm. And then basically tactics, calculation, yeah, mm -hmm. move around, uh, uh, use your opponent's blunders, spot blunders immediately. So this is the first first uh, book. Basically, it was, the idea is like, it's more curriculum. Mm -hmm. So uh, a chess player and teacher on the school, let's say on, in a normal school, the, the kids learning chess, a teacher is just training them the moves or how to whatever, very principle or easy things. Mm -hmm. And now the next level, you know, I mean, because there are lots of, let me restart. There are lots of materials how to start chess. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the yeah. from beginning. the beginning, so there are beginning. millions of materials, if I can say that, tons of. Mm -hmm. Yes, exactly. It yeah. tells like how the pawn moves, how mm -hmm. the king moves. But yeah, so all of the so rules millions, and notation. Mm -hmm. millions, millions of books. But the next next step, actually, after this, there's very few. Mm -hmm. It is pretty and much neglected, it, yes. Yeah, neglect, neg neglected. neglected. Mm -hmm. And then only after a certain level, then it comes like, you know, then they're coming this opening books, very specific books, yeah, end game books. Yeah. But actually the level in between uh, 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 finishing beginner level and being a real tournament player, this level has very little literature. Yeah. This is, and, and this is where this books aim. So let's see a uh, uh, normal school teacher who just regularly visits the chess club in town and plays on whatever level, yeah, mm -hmm. can take this book basically as a curriculum teach yeah. the teach the the tactics there use my advices add of course the own personal feeling about this and this is the idea of this trilogy mm -hmm. basically to for this level okay thank you very much now the next yeah. volume because we are just having just two to discuss the second one is volume yeah. two from tactics to strategy and we need knowledge and as you just mentioned, yeah. when you have the sound fundamentals about tactics, mm -hmm. we just avoid blunders because the more games we play, the more we analyze the blunders, we, the faster we can get rid of them, right? We can get into the strategy for the next step. And what about this book? How uh, lets you get that? How did you get that transition from tactics into strategy? And what do you advise with the strategy to teaching the, let's say, uh, the, the stuff uh, for, for the students? Yeah, to say, I mean, it's like the right continuation. It's, it's mm -hmm. indeed the second part. So mm -hmm. let's see if a teacher teaches this uh, volume one. Yeah, it, it, it's a good continuation with volume two. So again, this is about uh, be, becoming a tournament player. So before going with your kid to the national championship or state championship, wherever, uh, this is the level to teach. Mm -hmm. So, and now it comes to, okay, the second thing there's, how to say, not beginners is the wrong word. It's some stack the tech, uh, strategy knowledge, like, okay, here we start weak pawn, weak mm -hmm. squares. Maybe the fundamentals right? of strategy, right? Fundamentals of strategy, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Fundamentals, yeah? Mm -hmm. Misplaced piece. Yeah. Things like this, yeah? Mm -hmm. And and this in a way you know many times it's even difficult to differ if let's say a misplaced piece is like a tactic to use or a strategy you know sometimes this is a gray area the definition is not not very clear mm -hmm. but it's it's trying to to get it to the level just the follow up yeah you know just and and basically volume two expects uh the kids to 
to solve many of the puzzles already. I mean, this this talking about, let's say, checkmate in three, checkmate in four, uh, win material in three moves, you know, this kind of things. Mm -hmm. uh, this is like volume two uh, uh, pretty much expects this this kind of level mm -hmm. it's so, a, like a, a little bit uh, expansion from the basics of strategy into the let's say mi middle ground and getting from strategy mm -hmm. more and more that is connected with tactics in a more coherent way is that correct yeah exactly yeah mm -hmm. so still it's a it's a teaching book it's not a training yeah mm -hmm. so so in a way the idea yeah basically the idea of offering teaches a curriculum that this is there and and the thing is like because there's nothing uh new on, on volume three volume three is a summary it's more a workbook mm -hmm. so lots lots of of tests examples puzzles so easy for a teacher just to print out and give to the kids mm -hmm. so you know this is this is the, the idea yeah yeah so and in the book itself there's space to write solutions mm -hmm. in the in the tasks but of course they can also copy print out and write the solution i'll just but show can... maybe for our viewers that there is the yeah. space between the diagrams it's... that you can just fill it and just hand out your coach or your teacher right yeah, exactly. This is this is the thing. Basically, yeah, it's a typical school workbook. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So, yeah. Let's see. I mean, like you you told, yeah. This this kind of area in chess literature is is very seldom uh, seldom addressed, right? Yeah? Mm -hmm. and, yeah, yeah. And I was in a way always surprised how did this happen why mm -hmm. there's so few materials yeah mm -hmm. by the way and... if i can add a little bit of note to you mm -hmm. to to your discovery mm -hmm. uh when i started streaming at twitch because i have been doing this uh, for mm -hmm. three years already the first year was some like testing out my skills uh, testing out the programs trying to see see how it works but the last two years i'm trying to do it more regularly so like in a better shape mm -hmm. better sense all of the better quality in general sense and uh, there was one of our friend Wernaki. He was from uh, Germany, by the way, and at the same time from the, uh, let's say, uh, academic staff. So he was only in university and so on. And he just mentioned to me, to me, because I am, uh, let's say, something like a very, very weak candidate master level, right? Without the title, but something like the level, very, very weak candidate master. And he just uh, to, to asked me to provide the material that you put into the box. Because he mentioned that mm. there is there is the let's say if you just make with the rating scale right you are getting from let's say 800 when you just started out right you are getting mm. into thousand after reading the books after the rules after checking in once so like super simple and after 1000 you reach there is the next step that you that the books address is 1700 or 18 right there is the big yes, gap it's... in just literature and it, it is some like expected that just playing the games, you skip from 1000 up to 1700. Mm. And from 1700, there are another books that you can just address into the, let's say, getting into the master level. But what can you do if you do not know what to do from 1000 up to 1700? And it looks like that this is your experience as well. And you provided the material mm. for this in this box. Is that correct, assessment? Yeah. yeah, this is perfectly summing it up. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you your, you and your friend dis I d discovered the same yeah this is the thing like yeah like like this is yeah so many millions of books for just to start out mm -hmm. with chess mm -hmm. and then so many books over let's say yeah, like you say 1700 level yeah and all this and then sp specific books about very specific openings mm -hmm. and all this specialized books just, we can say right yeah specialized with which just address only a very small group of people yeah because mm -hmm. this is already like a specialist level mm -hmm. i would even say between, that the, yeah? the, the weak weak title players right for example if you are a candidate master yeah. it is the time that mm -hmm. you should start learning a little bit deeper lines right deeper let's say yeah. stuff from the let's say opening yeah. manuals for let's say very strong players but before that it doesn't make too much sense right yeah exactly yeah mm -hmm. of course yeah here comes the thing of course learning i mean if kids would learn some specifics too early then it's of course you know that 
basically there's only certain resources yeah there's not enough time to do everything mm -hmm. so basically it's always important yeah with your time or with the time we should focus on the important things mm -hmm. which of course is not the specific opening but let's say learning tactics and whatever set set up norm i mean following uh general principles etc so mm -hmm. so this is this is the thing so i i mean yeah so kids should not like learn learn chess that they whatever should recall a certain move order or something this can can be done much much later mm -hmm. so first you should yeah. understand and after that you should yeah. memorize right if you can make general rule. yeah mm -hmm. yeah the memorizing thing comes much much later mm -hmm. so people should not try to do this too early because memorizing comes also from understanding yeah only first you understand mm -hmm. and then you you memorize a certain move order because of this and that reason but this is a very very much advanced level already yeah so, absolutely agree so yeah so this is what these books are about yeah let's see um, yeah yeah this from my side <laughs> yeah yeah, it was it was excellent. It was great. And therefore, just briefly for those of you guys who were just a little bit later or maybe you just forgot about these books, I highly recommend that because it is our friend Thomas Luther, Luther Stress Reformation, the first one. The second one, as we just mentioned, based on the project Chess Coaching for Kids, the under 10 project and the service test examples and information about this product under 8, under 10. The third book with the series of Trilogy. The first one, First Steps in Tactics from Thinker's Chess Academy with Grandmaster Thomas Luther. The second one, Volume 2 from Strategy to Tactics. And the third one is some like continuation of the tests together, some like sum up. And I highly recommend it because believe me uh, that uh, my friend that these books, when I started, I was skeptical because, you know, I am skeptical for all of the new books because there are a lot of books, especially at Amazon, that are pretty much, we, we have the previous meeting with James uh, Stripes. You probably know him from Chess Collectors Group, right? And he just mentioned clearly that it is a total crap. You know, some people just put some of the diagrams, right? They just put some of the information about the chess moves, about chess notation, about some of the generals in chess tournament, and they put it and it is like makes something beautiful, a beautiful cover because the cover is some like uh, made by graphic uh, graphic designers, and just the cover is is a good one, but the rest is complete crap. And when I saw your book, I was like, okay, I'm skeptical, but I will give it a try. And after I saw the book, after I saw the structure, the structure and all of the composition that you've done, I knew that I must have you into the interview. And therefore, I'm super grateful <laughs> you. that you accepted the invitation. And I'm super happy that you just share such a ton of information because we are the community. I mean, the let's say the players who are pretty much loving the game we are not the title players because we are pretty much let's say the opposite but we love the people as i just mentioned who br br brought bring the values right no matter what kind of values but you bring the values the values of the science scientific research the conclusions the structure material the methods the pieces of advice and you put it together with the with the let's say form of the books and therefore i highly recommend them because i know they are they are a really good one Oh, thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Mm -hmm. my big, yeah, my big pleasure. Yeah. Yeah. And if yeah, you, good thing. If you would like to make a little bit of summary about today's meeting, how, how have you feel during the, let's say, uh, our discussion? Do you have something, a little bit of insight maybe? Maybe there was the question that I didn't answer, but you would like to address a little bit of summary at the end, because we are just, let's say, cross the meeting for five minutes, but I guess it's perfectly fine, right? Because we are just making some yeah. like 80 to 90 minutes. Now we are having 90 minutes at this moment, therefore we are perfectly on time. But if a little give of summary, it would be perfect. Yeah, if thanks you wish, a lot. No, thanks a lot, Tamas, for, for having me here. It's my great pleasure, you know. This is, uh, yeah, well, thanks for contacting me. Yeah, well, I, I'm a member of the Facebook group mm -hmm. for, for a longer time, so I follow, I like to read about the books, you know. Also, I have a, a thing for historical books, so I sometimes I always enjoy the comments when someone finds an old book and, and posts a picture about this so i'm very happy about, about being in that group and seeing you know this this all this news mm -hmm. and 
No, also here speaking about my books is a great pleasure, you know. Thanks for for being so enthusiastic about it. They are great. Because, they uh, are great. Yeah. So in many of the um how to say the promotion for many how to say top level books is is very different. You have someone very famous writing about a very specific topic mm -hmm. and so on and so on. And yeah, thanks for giving me the spot here. You know, this is it's I my pleasure. Understand that uh, the books are just for the for the community. Mm -hmm. you know, yeah, it's yeah. So this is this is the thing I I just wanted to contribute. And like I said, yeah, well, I was maybe you know in life I came to this stage and just to teaching and whatever. I I deal a lot with with uh young players so i just thought like okay my my thing about this uh tactics and all this i just wanted to to give this uh, uh a place you know mm -hmm. so <laughs> yeah so my advice to all if you want to improve in chess focus on calculation mm -hmm. most of the games and really all the most games are decided by tactics so calculation will just bring you points yeah absolutely and therefore i'm super grateful as i just mentioned and more uh, more than once that i'm super grateful that you just did it because there are many trainers coaches or teachers that they just collected the experience knowledge and the materials but they do not share it right some like they have on their disposal but they do not share it to the community for whatever reasons right i do not mean egoistical but rather for example the uh, uh, problems with the let's say publishing as the form of book right because not everybody can can do it in the let's say respected publishers right that's what i mean and you did it and mm. and and, I, and when i just mentioned that when i saw this box with the thinker uh, thinkers uh, publisher I, I was some like okay i'll just have a look and after i I saw the structure way the uh, let's say because i can feel it right because i'm a little bit scientific guy if i can say that i can feel it whoever just make a really good job and whoever tries to pretend he or she is doing a good job therefore i can recognize that and your books are great and therefore i'm super happy that you just simply provided this let's say contribution to our community and now we can have it to disposal as the resources that's the key yeah, thank you so much. Also, let me mention that in today's time, the chess book is always a teamwork. So mm -hmm. I have many friends who helped. And you know, there's one thing is the puzzles. The next thing is the text. Mm -hmm. Next thing is the layout. Next thing is proofreading. Yeah, a lot of pro process the, steps, the, the, right? The, the cover. So my advice for all, you know, there are so many details we cannot be specialists for everything yeah, yeah. so yeah. so always you know uh, the publishers they 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 can help and and there are a lot of people who are really good in other things like proofreading so don't try to find all the mistakes yourself have a proofreader these people uh, are very good with language a friend of mine she just proofread my book uh, remember and then she sent me back a list of corrections and i was shocked you know so mm -hmm. so so rely on specialists yeah and and always think books are teamwork and think even the biggest authors of our time i mean the real big ones they have big publishers good proofreaders if you read a novel whatever from a very famous author and the, the novel is whatever 700 pages so many proofreaders did a good job so mm -hmm. you seldom find spelling mistakes so see it this way don't try to do it yourself yeah. as a chess player uh, bring up your your basic knowledge from your classes from from your uh, databases you have and and team up and make a book publish it yeah mm -hmm. so this would bring okay this would make the world better we all have should share the knowledge yeah? yeah absolutely i'm with the same position okay thank you okay yeah. my friend thank you very much for the meeting okay, thank you very thank much you. for Likewise. showing all of this stuff i'm really really grateful and i'm keeping fingers crossed maybe at some point you will just brought a little bit more with your knowledge and experience with more books because these these are very very good one okay thank you so much for having me Thomas. yeah my friend okay see you yeah and and take care yeah bye. okay okay bye bye
Now let me know if you enjoyed the meeting uh, and interview with our friend Thomas Luther and especially what you have learned, what you have, uh, let's say, seen different way, maybe what you have enjoyed, maybe you ought to have, let's say, uh, feeling during the conversation. Maybe there was the topics that you uh, really understood better or maybe you just seen it a different way and the offer and the offer of our meeting give you the different perspective this is important and in the meantime i'll bring the links into the books okay because one by one i'll put the links into the chat and in the meantime if you can share the feeling and the experience about our meeting it would be really really fantastic and now i'm just sharing the titles of the books that we discussed the first one is the uh, book luther's chess reformation the one that i mentioned that the, there was the publisher that wanted to change the title from the original from schoolboy into the grandmaster this is the book by quality chess the first title this is the one that i am just showing you right now this is the one luther's chess reformation by thomas luther from the schoolboy into the grandmaster it is the german translation of the book the second one just under 10 project is by the thinkers publishing therefore i'll just put the second one in a moment this is the second one right here the second book is right here The second one is here and the link for the book right here. It is the Chess Coaching for Kids, the Under 10 project. And this is the teamwork, teamwork. Thomas Luther was the, let's say, the manager of this project, if I can say that. And But it was the team effort. Therefore, take this into account. And the link for the books uh, of this is right here. By the way, you have the teasers, you have the sample in the pdf format that you can uh, let's say either download either read on the website for free there is the let's say eight to ten pages of the book with the selected pages therefore the second one is this one chess coaching for kids the under 10 project by thomas luther the third one is the series of the trilogy the first book from the trilogy is this one Thinker's Chess Academy with Grandmaster Thomas Luther, Volume 1, First Steps in Tactics. And I'll put this into chat in a moment. And if you have any questions for the, for the interview and meeting, any comments, just let me know. This is the link for the book. This is the first one. The second volume of the book, the follow up, is right here. This is the second one. And the link for the book is right here. And the third one, the one that I do not have all as yet but i am going to buy next year is the volume three and volume three is devoted to the summary about that crucial exercises to sharpen your understanding therefore it's the trilogy this is the trilogy and all of the links are into the chat let me know what's more would like to have about today's meeting all of the links are into the chat. Volume 1, First Steps in Tactics. And take notice, this is the series that was, uh, because I asked about it, is this the series from the 1000 up to 1700? And our friend Thomas Luther confirmed that this is the one. At some point, I will just show you how it looks like inside, what are the what are the examples and so on. Maybe right now I'll just show you. And believe me, there is a lot of a lot of stuff going on in these books. 
and the book is very well structured. It's not just the quality of the book as the, let's say, good paper and so on, but it's a very well structured. And that's why the series of free books, I have already two. Next year, I'll, I'll buy the third volume. And, and I'll just maybe reveal it because if I don't, you'll not be subscribing my channel. Based on the free volumes, based on the free volumes, I'll prepare some of the exercises with extracting some of the positions from the volume one, volume two, and volume three. You know what I mean? At some point, I'll extract some of the ideas from the volume one, volume two, volume three, and I'll present to you and you will see what is the quality of the material. The quality, quality of the books. For example, one of these books that contains, as you can see, service test examples, information about chess and under eight, under 10. Right? And that's why, that's why if he knows about it, he may have different opinion than me. And sometimes, uh, as you can probably uh, notice, that sometimes I just make a little bit of my experience and opinion, added some, uh, some information to his approach, right? And therefore, everybody is entitled to have his own opinion. And by the way, about the talented or gifted kids, the components that our friend Thomas Luther mentioned is the creativity. I just spotted this as well. All of the talented kids are very creative. They can see the very unusual solutions pretty quickly. They, they can not just see, they can generate that. The second one, quick calculations. Absolutely, absolutely. Whenever you play against the prodigy, they calculate variations like machine. And all of the coach can confirm that, not just uh, Thomas Luther, not just me, all of the coaches, when they work with the talented or gifted kids, they have very good calculations, very quick calculations. And I played some of such kids at tournament practice. And uh, once when I played, uh, it was probably four years ago, something like four years ago, I was uh, playing uh, the last round at the overboard tournament, uh, uh, tournament in Poland. And I was playing against one of the junior that was pretty, pretty, let's say, uh, good. And I was something like that. Okay, now I, I, I'm going to play this move. And I was something like, after one minute, I say, okay, I'll just play this and it's winning. But I was, okay, just let's get deeper if it is actually winning. And after 10 minutes, I investigated all of the variations. If I played this move, this would be the blunder after five moves deep because due to the tactical calculations. After the game, because he just blundered, because he played a little bit too quickly at the other parts of the game. After the game, I asked my opponent, he was some like 11 or 12 years old. I asked him if he calculated th this line and he mentioned yes. And I asked him, how could you do that within 20 seconds? And he said, I did a lot of uh, puzzles. I can do it with, with such a short period, short time period. I needed to calculate up to 10 minutes the stuff that he calculated just in 20 seconds. You know what I mean. The third component about the uh, talented or gifted kids is the very good memory. Our friend Thomas Luther mentioned good memory. In fact, it's a very good memory. Not a good memory, very good one. Of course, it is some like a little bit of addition, but it must be a very good memory. For example, one of the uh, biggest chess player uh, ever, Vishwanathan Anand from India, uh, were tested by chess base uh, chess-based uh, chess -based creator, uh, Frederick Friedel. And he was given, I mean, uh, Vishwanath Ananan, he was given some of the games to have a look. After two months, he recited all of the moves from, from the newspaper or from the magazine just immediately, after two months, in the, uh, another, let's say, uh, circumstances in another place. Therefore, very good memory. The fourth com component, willpower to win. Talented kids are very, very uh, driven, internally driven, to succeed in the field they want to pursue. No matter if it is the sport, the science, the music, it doesn't matter. If they are hooked, hooked about something that they really go very deeply, they are pretty much obsessed, if I can say that, to win, to succeed and to win. Obsessed. 
Not all of them can handle the pressure, not all of them can match, um, manage emotions, but they are close to obsessed. And the fifth element would be the... Um, would be the... Uh, how to put that? The uh, higher, maybe not higher, the faster, uh, the faster processing of the information in general sense. They are some like having a better processor if you just uh, compare with the uh, compare with the uh, computers. They have better processors. It's better, more efficient, uh, more efficient calculations with the shorter time control. Not just calculations in the sense of calculating variations, but calculations like processing the data. This is the fifth factor, at least from what I've seen.